So can you give us a bit of a rundown on what it, like what's the pathway look like? Let's just say medical students listening to this, how can they become an ICU specialist? Oh yeah, so I guess uh, there is a plenty of opportunities for you to, what I call is uh, try the entree. Uh, before you <laughs> eat the main right. platter. <laughs> um, so so the, the entree is basically when you're in medis, me, uh, medical school in phase three, you will always have opportunity to do critical care term and you will have at least one week or two weeks allocated to ICU. Now, a lot of the medical students come in the morning, do the round and then they go home or, or they go with the excuse that they want to study. But I think the, the more learning happens in medicine actually on the job at the bedside, I th and not only that, but at around 3 p.m. Yes, that's, what that's right. You're right. And, and I only realized that way too late in my medical degree because, yes, I would go home and study. I, and I would probably study, to be honest. But then in fifth and sixth year, I stayed, I stayed much more. And it was always at 3 p.m. Yes. All right. When the jobs are almost done, that, yeah. that the internal resident can go, oh, by the way, medical yeah, student, let's talk about yeah. thyroid toxicosis. Yeah. You know, and, and all the ICU transports, some of the very good rapid response calls in cath labs, mm. all those things happen. And I usually funnily call this as a, so sundown phenomena happens for the patients while the sunrise phenomena happen for ICU, <laughs> where we actually start waking up and start doing more stuff mm. around that 3 p.m. mark. So you're right. Mm. So, so the longer you stay in, in, in ward environment, you will start to actually understand what the specialty is about. Mm. And that's where you will actually start getting attracted to the specialty because you will see so many stuff in the specialty, even in one week or two weeks time. And then obviously when you are Inter unfortunately, there is no term in internship to yeah. come to intensive care. But even when you're rounding um, on your patients as a primary team in, in intensive care, keep your eyes and ears open and try to observe the things that happen. So there are plenty of opportunities on your way uh, to explore what actually ICU is and why the ICU is regarded as the best specialty in the hospital. Sorry, I'm just... <laughs> going to say that out loud but um, but I guess there's a lot of respect for ICU overall in the hosp every hospital I guess uh, and that's partly because of the nature of the work that um, usually the teams do in intensive care so uh, for you in order to kind of whether to decide whether this is for you or not I think the best way is to kind of come and do electives or explore more mm. uh, in your in your terms and I think and or or maybe just have a chat with any of the bosses and, and on, your, on your free time and listen to these podcasts that's right and say they want to become an ICU so yeah. they've done in, they've done internship and residency sure. yeah. then well, then what happens after so yeah so then you have to now expect it to do obviously the RMO year uh, which is still um, a routine RMO year and then you have to do a critical care SRMO or ICU SRMO year either of those two things so critical care SRMO where you will have a three months rotation in anesthesia ICU ED and, and pediatric and a three months an ICU is quite useful to get your kind of uh, testing. But if you are more interested and then uh, really want to, you can just do a 12 months of ICU SRMO year. Out of that, the six months will be uh, considered as a foundation training towards the college. Wow, I yeah. didn't know that. That's right. And then That's you really can good. apply to the College of Intensive Care Medicine. And you're half a year in already. That's right. That's so you have already done the six months and you're already into college now. And then following year, you can be actually ICU registrar. Uh, and then you can start thinking about uh, sitting for your primary exam, which is mainly physiology and pharmacology. So that exam takes at least one year of kind of preparation. So once you've done that uh, primary exam and two years as a basic trainee. One year of, pr of preparation, but a little bit less if you have the podcast. That's okay. right. That's right. So listen to ICU primary podcast. Thanks, Sil. Uh, but yeah, then once you finish your ICU primary exam, then you become the advanced trainee. Right. And, then, oh, right. yeah. and then you work as a senior registrar more, much more independently, more decision making and more driving kind of the car on on your own mm. um especially in the night time and then at night time is there a boss around or is it so the senior boss registrar? is always on call yeah uh, while the senior is on, is on, on the site. site so yeah. that's why so you're, similar with ed that's right that's right and then um 